Alrighty, I'm gonna be making a quick video. Uh, part of overclocking your graphics card is looking at how other people uh, overclock their graphics card and what they were able to get their graphics card to. So this is a overclock video for my uh, ASUS ROG Strix G GTX 1060 6GB edition. Um, so the default program that comes with the graphics card that, you know, the Republic of Gamers and Asus uh, allows you to use, uh, the maximum GPU boost that you can do is up, uh, giving plus 170 on the, uh, GPU boost. So I, I opted to use MSI Afterburner instead. Uh, that way I would be able to get a higher clock speed on it. And so... Basically, my values for it that worked for me were 214 on the core clock and 450 on the memory clock uh, in terms of megahertz added. Um, so I turned up the power limit to the maximum and the temperature limit up to the maximum as well. So 116% on the power limit and 92 on the temperature limit. Uh, my core clock went up 214 and my memory clock went up 450 uh, so let me tell you what kind of values I got added and different uh, starting with Unigen Heaven uh, I used the Unigen Heaven to test the stability of the core um, I the default non overclocked was 64.7 average frames per second with a score of 1,629. Uh, the minimum frames per second were 31.1, with a maximum of 132.4. Uh, I was able to get the clock up to 500. However, I was seeing artifacting during, uh, during the usage of it. It actually made it through the bench, but was, you know, artifacting. Um, that one was 71.9, 18.10, 33.1, and 147. Uh, I tuned it down to about 480, and I was able to get 71.4, 1800, 33.4 for minimum, and 146.7 for the maximum frames per second. Now, when I tried to uh, use my GeForce uh, experience to record, uh, I was seeing some slight artifacting. So I tuned it down to 450, uh, as I have explained before, and that gave me 71.5, which is actually 0.1 more uh, frames per, average frames per second than 480. 1801, which is one point more than, than the uh, 480. However, the problem with doing that memory clocking is that you get a wider array of... Uh, frames per second. So our minimum frames per second on this overclock was 31.9 and our maximum was 146.4. Um, the overclock was showing 2,113 uh, on all of the overclocks and the non-overclock was showing 1,911. Um, but yeah, so anyway, going back, the difference between the uh, 480 and the non-overclocked uh, was 6.7 frames per second on average, 171 points, and uh, 2.3. Uh, there was more uh, 2.3 more minimum frames per second, and the maximum frames per second was 14.3 more than the maximum of the non-overclock. So that's that. Uh, that's that difference. So we were able to see anywhere from 3 to uh, 15 frames per second added. Uh, usually it's probably more around the you know, 7, 8, 9 mark, um, which is very good for overclocking. I mean, it's you know, free, free performance. But anyway, on to the numbers that everybody generally knows, and that's 3D Mark. I ran the TimeSpy application uh, as it's the only free one. And uh, non-overclocked, we got a score of 4,376, uh, with the frame per second on the first te test being 
27.4, 24 on the second test, and the, G, uh, the GPU score was 4,191. Uh, once we overclocked, and this is the 450 overclock that I used, uh, we got 4,786 with 30.1, 26.6, and a GPU score of 4,635. The difference between the scores was 410 in terms of the overall score, uh, and it was 2.7 and 2.6 frames added with the overclock, and 444 GPU score added. Um, I should note that these scores are with my uh, current graph, uh, CPU, which is a Intel iCore i7 7700K, uh, overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. So your values may be different if you're, you know, non-overclocked CPU or you are on a different CPU. But yeah, so these were the values that I got uh, anywhere from three to 15 frames per you know frames per second difference in general uh, I have not personally tested it in games at least not extensively so the stability of it is still technically in question however I'm fairly confident in these values to allow me to have stable performance while gaming since I was able to run all of the benchmarks and stress tests while recording on these settings so uh, yeah if it turns out that these settings aren't correct. I will update it in the description below to inform you of the change. Otherwise, these values are still solid. And yeah, so when you are, you know, doing your graphics card for your ROG Strix or just any kind of 1066 gigabyte, you can uh, keep a lookout and... Uh, yeah, good luck, and uh, have fun running all of those benchmarks a billion times, as I have done for the past three hours. Goodbye.